Hello, everyone. Well, temperatures are climbing, and hopefully, spring is here for good. With the nesting season just around the corner, you're probably thinking whether you should be putting out something for birds to help them build nests. You certainly can. Dry leaves, uh, dry flowers, hay, uh, pine needles, those are all really good things that help them build their nest. Things that I don't like and don't recommend are dry lint and yarn because they might have remains of all kinds of chemicals. I prefer everything natural. And I also happen to have a dog a very furry dog and in the spring he loses a lot of fur so what we do every time we cut his fur in the spring is that we basically leave it out outside so i can just go like this yes that feels good doesn't it Finry? there we go and then we leave it on branches just like that So if you have access to any kind of animal, a horse, a sheep, a cat, a dog, you can use their hair or their fur. And if you don't have access to any animals, well, send me a message and I'll send you a little package. Hi, David. It looks like spring has definitely arrived in British Columbia already. Everything looks so green and nice and warm. Lucky you. Well, I have a question for you from Christine Helmus from Ontario. She feeds blue jays peanuts and shells, but they eat them so fast that she can barely keep up. Now she's wondering if it's possible to overfeed them. Hi, Christine. I could not help chuckling at your question about those greedy little blue jays. I too have had similar experiences with these birds, particularly with peanuts in the shell placed in an open feeder. Blue jays are among the smartest birds on the planet, and rather than having to share the peanuts with any other birds, they just keep coming back to the feeder, grabbing as many peanuts as they can carry in their beaks and fly off to store them somewhere else. And they don't stop until the feeder is empty. They usually hide the peanuts by burying them just under the soil in some favorite places. And they're pretty good at remembering the sites too. As for overfeeding birds in general, this really is not possible. Birds will only feed themselves until they're satiated. I'm waiting for someone to invent a feeder that will make it a little tougher for those jays to remove the peanuts. It would be nice to see those strikingly colored birds stick around the feeder a little longer. Go Jays, go! When we think of a bird song, we think of birds opening their mouths and giving it their best shots. But not all birds sing with their throats. The African broadbill is one of the few birds that uses its wings to create a sound to attract potential mates. Check out the video in the link, it's quite amusing. Researchers have recently documented how this particular bird makes the sound by flexing its wings in a certain way. This is not the only species that use different body parts to create sound. Certain species of hummingbirds use their tail feathers to create a noise to attract a mate. The American woodcock is actually like a, a one-man band because it combines the sound from its throat and also from its wings. Ah, things we do for love. <clears throat> on Around the World this week, I would like to take you to my home country, Belarus. I was really surprised when I read this article because bird watching and bird feeding are not very popular there yet. And I'm also not too crazy about zoos. The only thing that I appreciate about them is that very often they contribute to the survival of certain species. And they also organize all kinds of programs to educate the public about, let's say, endangered species of birds or animals, like this zoo in Minsk, Belarus. There, they organize a birdhouse festival every spring. They ask participants to build their own house and not just go and buy any birdhouse and then bring it to the zoo. For each birdhouse, you will get a free admission. All the houses are then assigned a number and placed outside the zoo in a green space where anyone can just come for a walk, enjoy nature, hear the birds, and of course, check the birdhouses. The families that build the birdhouses can also come and visit and see if they got any tenants. And if they don't, then I guess it's time to change their design for the next year. 
It seems like I read or hear about airstrikes almost every day now. Two weeks ago, I told you about the Federal Aviation Administration changing all the lights on warning towers at airports to prevent birds from being hypnotized. But a Dutch company actually has gone much further and created something they called the Robird. This is a 3D printed robotic peregrine falcon that follows a pre-programmed flight pattern around the airports and it's so scary that all the birds just fly away once they see it. This bird has been successfully used in many locations, but for the first time, Robot has been officially approved to supervise bird traffic at Wies Airport, Germany. I hope they'll bring one here too. Canada is such a beautiful country and the rock is a certainly a place to go on your bucket list. Comparing to the US, Canada doesn't have as many bird festivals, so when I find one, I really like to talk to you about it. This week, I present the Wings of the Rockies to you, which will take place between the 9th and the 15th of May. This is actually their 20th year. Check out the gorgeous pictures that Jan Campbell sent to us. The festival has a theme, Reflections on Water, and their keynote speaker is Dr. David Schindler, who will be talking about freshwater conservation and climate change. Ah, oh, the sun is shining and it's actually so warm. So hopefully hummingbirds will be here anytime if you haven't seen them already. We're still giving away hummingbird feeders like this one made by Wild Bird Trading Company. Well, let's check out the top five. And this feeder is going all the way to Michigan to Mark Robinson. Congratulations, Mark. That's it for this week. I hope you're enjoying the spring weather and you're all out in your gardens planting those native plants and flowers and trees to attract more birds.